Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today I want to share my greatest wine experiences of 2023. 2023 has been an amazing year for me and No Sediment Wine YouTube channel and I want to share my highlights with you guys. Of course, we can reduce it to just my greatest wines of 2023, the best of which I will still list in this video. However, for me, wine is more than bottled liquid. It's about the people you meet, the wineries you visit, and the emotions you experience. Therefore, these are my seven best wine experiences of 2023. And be sure to stick around until the end of this video where I will be doing a giveaway of this exclusive no sediment hat to one of you guys. Let me paint you a picture. We were traveling through Southern Rhone, which was quite hot, and I don't deal with hot weather very well. I felt tired and sleepy all the time, and yet we had planned another winery visit that day, which was in Saint Joseph, so north. In the northern part of Rhone, it was humid, foggy, and rainy that day, really uninviting. Exhausted, we got there, but couldn't find the winery. You see, even though Pierre Gonon is the top top winery of that area, they don't have magnificent signs, gift shops and tasting rooms, they are Vineron. Anyway, we managed to locate the winery and meet Jean Gonan himself. At that moment I was tired and quite frankly irritated at everything and the only thing I wanted to do was go home as soon as possible. But boy, what a great experience it turned out to be. We gathered wine glasses and proceeded downstairs into the cellars. Jean Gonon started with bottled wines of his Saint-Joseph Blanc. And quite quickly, my bad mood was gone. The energy he gave us through his stories, his wines, was something deep and sincere. As with all legendary stories I sometimes hear from my peers, we proceeded to taste barrel samples. And at some point he left the room to go and get some older bottles. Just like Jean Gonon, their wines are also full of energy, offering bright fruit, elegance and depth of flavor. Pierre Gonon wines are by no means cheap, but I think their honesty and humbleness is something that many of us should learn. Truly one of the highlights of my 2023. Now let's move to the wine, and yet it will also be linked with traveling. I had this crazy idea to travel to Bordeaux by car. It takes a good 32 hours just driving from where I live, so it can be quite exhausting. It just happens that without large detour, one can stop in Sancet and enjoy freshness and zestiness of Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc. We didn't spend much time there, just lunch and a walk around the area. And as a true cheese lover, I found a fromagerie and made some epic choices that I would feel in the car for the rest of the trip. But I also found a François Cotat Sancet there, and since I read that it is highly regarded and well-respected winery of the area, and yet never tasted it, I decided to buy that as well. Arriving at a truly amazing palace in Bordeaux, where I got to stay thanks to my friends, François Cotat was the very first bottle I put in the fridge to open later as a prize for all those long hours spent in the car. Later comes and I open this wine expecting to have high acidity, dry palate and crisp fruit. But no, it is sweet. Not lusciously sweet, but it has some residual sugar, it is dense and rich, I was so, so disappointed. I checked the bottle, convinced that I have mixed something up, that I have taken Vouvray or something, but sure enough, it was Sansa. I started to read all imaginable resources about this producer. I even asked Loire Valley guru Chris Kisak on X slash Twitter. And all I got is that this producer harvests his grapes as late as possible when they are really, really ripe. And sometimes does as he pleases and sugar can be left. Disappointed, I put a different bottle in the fridge, slowly finish my François Cotat Sancerre in the glass and leave it. Next day comes, we wake up early and go to city of Bordeaux, walk, enjoy ourselves, it is my favorite city in France. And yet, all I can think about is that wine, that François Cotat Sancet, Le Cue de Bougeot, 
2020. I cannot wait until I am back home to taste it again, to taste that purity of fruit, that density and richness. And this goes to all my commentators who say that typicity is a virtue. No, diversity, quality, a wine that can give you something more than just simple buzz is a virtue. This is now my favorite, even though so atypical sunset, period. This is very personal to me. I study at Institute of Masters of Wine and those who have studied there or know anything about the study process and requirements understand that you need to interview as many wine personalities as possible for those bloody examples. But the reason why this is amongst the best wine experiences for me of 2023 is because of the people I get to meet and interview. Starting from the very first one I did with Andrew Jefford to the very last I just published with charming and knowledgeable Gaia Gaia. And funny enough, these were the two videos where I felt the most intimidated and worried. I have been incredibly lucky that all my guests agreed to sit and talk with me and spend an impressive amount of time in the world that starts to look very much like Momo book. Not only that, during these interviews I have also learned a lot and gained experience that otherwise I wouldn't have. I have also laughed a lot, believe it or not I have frozen, have stuttered and every single one of them has left me with a better feeling than before. Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today <laughs> Difficult, eh? Yeah, oh, I told oh, you. Yes, oh, good. Stay tuned for the next episode. No Sediment Wine Podcast is available here on YouTube and on all the major podcasting platforms. I have always said that the wine world allows you to look at it from the angle you are interested the most. Be it chemistry, be it biology or physics, you can also view it through the prism of economy, politics and history. And you can also appreciate it through architecture. Architecture is not something that I know a lot about, I just simply like to enjoy the aesthetics of it as a commoner. While Rioja wines were the number one reason I wanted to visit the region, the second was the impressive architecture of the wineries. We can of course like it or not, but one cannot argue that these are not worth visiting or something unique. One of the two most impressive, in my view, was the better known Marquise de Riscal. This famous building, made to look like a mature wine, is not a winery, it is a hotel placed in the middle of what I can only describe as the Disneyland for the grown-ups. You can visit the vineyards, the winery, the cellars, the gift shop, taste the wines and at the end even go to the spa. The second one, Bodegas Isios, I have been wanting to visit for a very long time. It is designed by the controversial architect Santiago Calatrava and built against the backdrop of the Sierra de Cantabria mountain, creating a truly epic look. The grandiosity and uniqueness cannot be expressed in the pictures. It was exactly as I imagined it to be and better. Rioja and its wineries are worth visiting even if you don't enjoy wine at all. I am not as old nor as rich to have wines in my cellar from the 70s or 80s. Therefore, it is not something I often get to taste and usually these will be bottles shared with me by my friends, colleagues and industry professionals. Not all wines have the ability to age as long and if you get to taste back vintages that are older than you are, you can only hope this bottle comes directly from the winemaker's cellar. This way you know it is the real deal, it has been kept in near perfect conditions all this time and hasn't really been moved much. On my last trip to Piemonte, Italy in November, I visited a lot of wineries and many producers, including Gaia Gaia, noted that they often find enjoyment in wines from vintages that critics don't praise highly. And I was incredibly lucky to experience this myself. 1973 is considered a weak vintage, producing wines with no potential. Unlike 1989, which we also tasted at the setting and is considered a great vintage with a perfect score. And yet the greatest wine at that table was the 1973 
Prunotto Barolo, it still showed fruit. And not barely any fruit, almost dying fruit, but good dried fruit. It also showed lovely mid palate, something that old wines often lack. It was not just acidity and tannin. It had lean, slightly bony body of someone who has seen age, but lived beautifully through it. And it held in that glass for a long time. It showed truffle, black earth, and balsamic notes as it opened, all wrapped with beautiful dried cherries. Beautiful wine and beautiful experience. On that legendary trip to Bordeaux, I also had the opportunity to visit some epic wineries. Of course, some can be more memorable, not only because of their wines, but also because it is rare that you ever get to be allowed to enter their premises. One of them certainly is Chateau Latour. It is a winery that almost everyone has heard about, even if you are not involved in the wine industry. We were welcomed so warmly there, receiving a full tour in the vineyards and the winemaking area and the cellars. All our questions were answered with no rush. And of course, the cherry on the top was the tasting of collectibles themselves. Since Chateau Latour is not a wine I can afford to enjoy often, it was definitely a truly impressive birthday celebration and definitely one of the highlights of my 2023. And lastly, I want to share my number one wine of 2023. And guess what? You all experienced it with me. It was blind tasting of Stella di Campalto Brunello di Montalcino 2015 for the No Sediment video. I went into that video honestly thinking that I will not give the highest score to the most expensive wine of the flight. I was wrong. It turned out to be one of those wines that you don't simply drink but savor, enjoy, talk about, come back to after a while and see what else it is telling you, what it has opened up and is offering in the glass. It is not only fruit, acid, alcohol and tannin, it is something else, something ethereal. It almost felt that the wine itself had a soul that it was sharing with us. It was layered and complex, it had power and structure and yet at the same time it felt fragile. It is also surprising how in times of jammy and rich fruit, they have been able to preserve freshness with bright cherry-driven aftertaste that just lasts forever. You know, I recently did a wine judging and one of the fellow judges told me, if you think it is 10, then just give 10. So I will give 10. I know I will be having Stella di Campalto Brunello di Montalcino way more in my wine fridge next year, but that is a story for another video. Looking back on 2023, I couldn't be more blessed with the experiences I had. But I would also like to express my gratitude to my friend who opened up their Bordeaux estate for me to stay rent-free. It was a truly gorgeous time I had there. And funny enough, I would also like to highlight two other experiences in Di Langa, Piemonte. One at the Enrico Rivetto's winery, which smells amazing, filled with beautiful colors of flowers and bursting with life, including bees, butterflies and dragonflies. I wish to see more wine estates so alive like his. And big thanks to Aldo Vacca from Produttori del Barbaresco, who drove around with me in the area and shared his knowledge of the single vineyards of Barbaresco. It was just so exciting. I hope to catch it on tape sometime soon. Lastly, I want to thank all of you for supporting me and tuning in every week, for commenting and sharing your experiences, your wines and your frustrations and more. You are the best and I'm thankful that I have you. As promised, I will be giving away this hat to one of you. Currently, it is not available for purchase. To enter, all you have to do is comment on this video about your top wine or wine experience of 2023. I will announce winner in one of my January videos, but until then, Happy New Year and see you in 2024!